audience tonight, let's get clarification. What is a brown dwarf? Ed, a brown dwarf is believed to be the missing link between stars and planets. Now, they have a mass up to 80 times that of Jupiter. This particular dwarf is about 30 to 65 times the mass of Jupiter. Now, less than 1% of stars that are the size of our sun have a brown dwarf orbiting within a distance three times that of the distance between our sun and Earth. This dwarf is more special because they believe that it's actually closer than that in an area that they typically refer to as the brown dwarf desert. This means that that desert may not be as dry as they had initially thought that it was. And the reason why it's important for scientists to observe these objects is because they are further away from the sun, which makes them much easier to do research on. Now, the lead author of this study says, quote, we want to understand how brown dwarfs form around stars and why there is a gap in where they are found relative to their host stars. Back to you, Ed. Well, assignments, I understand, have been updated for astronauts headed into the International Space Station next year. What's the latest on that? So crew members have been reduced. Russia has decided to send fewer of its uh, cosmonauts into the ISS. Typically, Roscosmos, the Russian space station, has sent three astronauts. It's now sending two, which does mean that all of the missions that are planned are going to be short one member. Russia has offered to uh, sell the vacant seat to NASA, but it's unclear whether NASA will take up that offer. And this does not mean that Russia is getting out of the space game or slowing down even. In fact, they are planning to launch a new uh, segment of the ISS next year or in 2018, depending on when it's actually finished. And at that time, they're going to be sending additional crew members up to the ISS. But right now, it's really about cutting costs for them and saving money. Now, the first ISS mission of 2016, 2017 is scheduled to take place in March. And during that time, they are going to send uh, Russian cosmonaut Fyodor Yurchikin, who is going to act as the commander, along with one member of NASA, astronaut Jack Fisher. And from there, about four other ISS missions will take place uh, between May and November of next year, Ed. All right. Brigitte Santos reporting tonight from Los Angeles. Thanks, Brigitte. Now, uh, what I'm going to show you here is uh, the approximate position of the uh, Nibiru and its seven planets coming in. Um, because uh, this is apparently a genuine photograph in the center there with this red with the black dot and the uh, uh, what appears to be a planet up to the left. Um, it's coming in, this photograph, uh, what I'm going to show you on Stellarium, is uh, set up for Hobart, Tasmania, south of Australia. And uh, you'll see Jupiter. Now, if you just notice around here, the stars aren't that uh, numerous. And I think what's happening is, is that the light coming from the distant stars um, are being absorbed into the rear of the magnetic field because the light is being bent. I mean, uh, light is bending in space all the time. In the old Cathay ray uh, tubes, ray tubes, uh, which is the old television sets, that's how a television set works. You bend the light uh, electrons coming at the screen. So I'll now go over to Stellarium and show you the same scene, basically. So there's Jupiter there. We'll pull that over. So in this area here is where I was showing you. Now I'm going to um, show you what happens when we get out and away from that spot that I've determined where this is going to be and you'll see how the light comes on. And then as we go back towards where I think that the Nibiru object is, is uh, the lights go out. So I go back again, the lights go on. So the light is being bent and absorbed by the Nibiru object. So we'll go up now towards Taurus, which is up here, and you'll see the light comes on again. There's Taurus there. The light's going off again. So possibly um, 
This hasn't been noticed by the authorities. We'll just go up again. And she comes on again. Come back down. Jupiter just goes off screen. Now we go left and right. Give it some perspective. Light comes on. Off. Light comes on again. So it would appear to be around this area here. Um, not to say that it is, but it appears to be that's where the effect is occurring. Now, it could be behind Jupiter itself. It could be over this area here. But somewhere in this general vicinity. So uh, that's just a little update on what I've been able to, uh, to determine. Could be a possible indication where it is coming in from. And of course, Castor and Pollux down here is... Uh, the twins, first and second coming. So, uh, I'll talk to you later. Planet X special bulletin, a dwarf star and seven planets are coming in. For the past few hours I've been listening to Patty Brassard, spelled Brass, B-R-A-S-S-A-R-D, a former NASA employee who built the robots which are being used on Fukushima at this moment. She tells of an incoming solar system with seven planets and says that by August 11th, 2013, the existence of Planet X will be undeniable. She says when this object lines up with our sun on August 17th, 2013, another major earthquake will occur. This time, though, the object will be only 0.32 AU away from the Earth. The unit AU stands for astronomical unit. That's the distance from the Earth to the Sun, previously measured at 93 million miles. But Patty says that the Earth is being pulled in toward the Sun and this elongates the orbit and will make summers very, very hot and winters the coldest you've ever experienced. More frighteningly, she said that our electric grid will go down. And when it does, all nuclear power plants will go down too. It is electricity which keeps the reactors cool and when the electric grid goes, the power plant has only hours on auxiliary power before that too fails. And from what I understand, that means total meltdown. And she says you should locate these nuclear power plants. She said there are over 100 in the United States alone. And make sure that you're not near one. I saw a map. They're all over the East Coast. In fact, I look out the window and I can see one. She said the kill zone in Fukushima was 150 miles. Everybody within 150 miles dies when the nuclear power plants melt down. When I looked out the window and saw one at Palo Verde, I put my head between my legs and kissed my ass goodbye. Patty's in Massachusetts and her basement is at sea level so she does not intend to survive the passing of Planet X. She said Russian and Israeli troops are here to round up the people who protest and put them into the FEMA camps that that's what they were built for. She also said that those buildings have gas pipes two feet thick in diameter and that they don't want the people on the surface to survive. She talks about Auschwitz and I gather that they're going to gas the people in there. Don't go to a FEMA camp under any circumstances. You will never come out alive according to...
which she says is caused by an eclipse. This object is between the sun and us. She says that Mars is getting hammered right now with all the debris from the tail. And she recommends that if you want to survive, that you find the highest place on Earth and get underground. Dig a hole. She says bring a camper and bury it under three feet of Earth. She says rent a backhoe or something to cover it up. I think this is all insanity. What are you going to do? Breathe radioactive air and survive? You're going to go fishing? Catch fish in order to eat? She says the worst of this will be from the end of August until November. That's four months. How are you going to survive? September, October, November. Three months. Each person needs half a gallon of water every day. Fresh water, not radioactive water. I think most of us had better put our heads between our legs and kiss our ass goodbye. All those things I spoke about in my Planet X videos, I have about 40 of them. One of them has over a million views. And all those things I talked about turn out to be true. And nobody is sadder than me about that. I wanted it to be wrong. I wanted the earthquakes and volcanoes and sinkholes to be some kind of hoax. But who has the ability to cause earthquakes and volcanoes and sinkholes just to have fun? It's not easy to fake a quake, Jake. This is not a mistake. California, Patty says, will drop into the ocean. It's somewhere between the 17th of August, 2013, and the 26th of August. She says there will be a magnitude 15 quake centered in Seattle, Washington. So I picked up the phone and called all my friends and told them, and they laughed at me. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Go back to sleep. Patty says her own family has scheduled a family reunion from the 10th of August to the 17th. So that tells you how serious her own family is about her words. I think it's very serious. You don't call in all the ambassadors from all the embassies and close the embassies on a whim. These people have tickets to the underground facilities, and you don't, because you are a dirtbag. That's what I've been saying all along. They treat you, the host of the parasites, like a dirt bag. You paid for all of those underground facilities over the past 50 years, and now you're not invited. And so they expect when the people learn the truth, they're going to be angry. They're going to get their guns, and they're going to try to kill somebody. And you're going to end up killing one of our own who's just uninformed. He thinks he's serving his country. He thinks he's a hero. And you're going to kill him? It'd be better if you talk to him. Talk to all military. Talk to all cops. And tell them what's going on. Because in the next 10 to 20 days, there's going to be a great awakening by everyone who realizes we are finished. You can't jump in your car and run to get something at the grocery store if the UV a, B, and C are coming down on you. It's deadly. Microwaves will cook your car. She says that microwaves will heat up anything that's metal. It will be red hot from the sun. If California has a 15 magnitude earthquake, do you realize what that will do? And there is nobody to come in and rescue anybody. Remember when all those buildings and freeways fell on people and passed earthquakes? Those were sixes and sevens. This is a 15. And every number you go up, it's 10 times more powerful. That means a 15 is a billion times more powerful than a 6. A 6.0 compared to a 15 is 9 numbers up. That's 10 to the ninth power. That's a billion times more powerful. Nobody can survive a 15. Nobody. Not a billion times more powerful than the ones that brought down the Nimitz Freeway and crushed cars as flat as a pancake. All that metal and steel crushed to a pancake with people inside them. I lived in California for about 30 years. I know the San Andreas Fault. I know where it goes in Los Angeles. I know where it goes in San Francisco. But once you get into Oregon and Washington, I don't know much about the San Andreas Fault. I understand that it goes all the way to Alaska. Now, if these plates fracture and California sinks because of lack of support, the pulling away from that plate, the Pacific plate, the tsunami that will come into Los Angeles could be very high. But Patty says we're going to lose much of California. 
And she says that Tagish Lake, Alaska, will be the new South Pole, that the pole shift has already begun. Tagish Lake, Alaska, I looked it up. There's a Canadian province. Most of Tagish Lake is in that province, B.C., might be British Columbia. But as soon as you go over into the U.S. side, Alaska, there's still part of the lake there, a very small part. But she says just north of there will be the new South Pole. Now, that's not what Nancy Leader said. Nancy Leader had the North Pole off the coast of Brazil and the South Pole dead center in uh, Saudi Arabia, I believe. Maybe it was reversed. Maybe the North Pole was Saudi Arabia and the South Pole was off the coast of Brazil. That's east of Brazil. Now Patty's telling us with inside information that Tagish Lake, Alaska will be the new South Pole. I believe that the pole shift is already underway because I've seen the map where the North Pole is moving. It's moving very quickly and it's accelerating. As I recall, it, the North Pole was headed toward Siberia and that it would arrive in Siberia in January of 2014. But I'm recalling this from memory. I, I can't be sure. I didn't look it up. But I looked up Tagish Lake, Alaska. I spun the globe. I turned it upside down so that that was the South Pole, and I spun the globe, and I found that Arizona will be in the Southern Hemisphere, and Australia will be in the Northern Hemisphere. Imagine that. Arizona will be the land down under. And it's too bad that I'll be dead in just 10 days or so because I was looking forward to looking up into those southern skies at night and having the experience of seeing things completely different. Now, you may recall on my previous Planet X videos, I spoke about microwaves cooking everything when the Van Allen belt collapses, and very, very few people understood that. They tell me they've got a garden. They're going to go camping. They'll be all right. And I knew that they had no idea what a microwave was or how it cooks you or how the Van Allen belt protects us, and that's going to collapse because this star is enormous. I always ridiculed those who said that this star was four times the size of Jupiter. Patty says that just one of the seven planets is four times the size of Jupiter. She said that the asteroid belt was a planet, and it got hit head-on by one of these things in the tail of Planet X, and it got smashed to pieces, and that Jupiter absorbed most of it, and the asteroid belt is just what's left over. Now imagine that you cannot go outside even to pee for six weeks because there will be deadly, she calls them UVA, UVB, and UVC, ultraviolet A, B, and C rays, which kill everything. I never heard of ultraviolet A, B, and C. I knew that ultraviolet rays kill everything, especially the things we depend on. That's why I say, if it kills the things we depend on for survival, how are you going to survive? She says that some people will survive. Maybe those microorganisms will be inside the caves. I don't know. I think life is going to be extremely difficult. I hope that the first to die are those in the underground facilities, the so-called elite and government, because they are the most evil. And all you religious people who think that Jesus is going to save you, well, you're going to find out. Now, this announcement that I'm making to you is the most grave announcement I have ever made about anything. And while Patty gives advice about how to survive, she says, dig a hole, cover it with at least three feet of dirt, put some sort of camper or something in there, rent a caterpillar or something that costs $200 a day, and dig a big hole in your backyard, put your camper in there, and then cover it up with three feet of dirt. That's crazy. You won't have food. You won't have water. You won't be able to go outside. How are you going to flush the toilet? If you do survive, you're going to be a totally mind-controlled, chipped slave for the elite if they survive. But she says that these underground facilities, which are now stocked with food that is uncontaminated by Fukushima radiation, because they've been stocking those underground facilities for decades. A truck driver called in, a woman, and said she delivered things to Denver Airport, the underground facility there, and they were labeled just general merchandise. So there's first-hand testimony that these underground facilities were stocked.